Hey, what's going on, RC drivers? Welcome to the channel. I've been meaning to make this video for a while now. I've seen a lot of new people in the hobby having the same problem, and it has to do with the steering. More so in crawlers, but it happens in other vehicles as well. And I just got an email in that pushed me to make in this video. It says, hey, Greg, love the YouTube channel. It's been a big help. I recently picked up my first RC crawler, and it's been fun, but I have a question. I noticed that when the truck is moving forward and I steer the truck all the way, it seems like one wheel stops turning. Is this normal or is this something I need to fix? And this is the problem that I've seen in Facebook groups. I get messages about, emails about. And yes, some trucks do have a problem. It's not so much a problem. It's more of just mechanics and the way things work. And, and I'm gonna tell you how to fix it, how to diagnose your particular problem. So what's happening here is that there's too much steering throw in a lot of ready to run trucks, uh, low budget trucks. And what happens is, they have, not, I shouldn't say lesser quality parts, but um, a dog bone and cup axle, let's say. So this style of axle tends to bottom out if steered too far, and it will cause this notchy type of feel to the truck. The truck will lurch a little bit, and what's happening is the dog bone is catching in the axle cup slot, and it's stopping the wheel. And what can happen is if you keep on doing that, either the axle will wear out, the dog bone will wear out, bearings will wear out, and it just causes problems even with driving the truck. So what you have to do is limit the steering on ready to runs. That's the easiest way to correct the problem. And I know you probably want a lot of steering out of your rig, but that's how you get rid of that issue is to reduce the amount of steering throw. Now in a low budget system, uh, let's say this one here, you're going to want to adjust your dual rate. When you adjust your dual rate, it limits the amount of steering you have both left and right at the same time. It's not individual. So you'll take the, uh, the little trim tab here that says STDR pretty much on every radio and you'll turn it back a little bit and try your car out, see if it has that notchy feel. If it still does, turn it down a little bit more and keep doing that until it stops. Now, another way to do it is to mechanically limit it on the car. So what you're going to do is go over to the steering horn. That's the piece that's coming off of your servo. And typically, most manufacturers have two holes there and your steering link goes in the outermost hole. The reason being is that gives you the most steering throw. It's like a lever. So if you go and move that steering link in one hole, it's going to limit the amount of throw and you won't have that notchy feeling in the end. Now, is there an upgrade that you could do to, can, to still have maximum steering throw? Yes, you could go and put universal axles in the front of your, let's say, crawler axle, and that should give you more steering throw or CVA type axles. So there's things that you can do. There's also, you know, you could also maybe limit your steering knuckles. Uh, sometimes there's shims that you can put in there, but typically it's either done through the radio system, through the electronic travel limiters, or through the mechanical uh, uh, servo horn, you know, where you place that link. So those are two, some things that you could check out. Now, if you have a little bit better of a radio, you'll have EPA, which is endpoint adjustment, and you could adjust your steering throw individually left and right. So if you're only noticing that notchy feel when you turn right, you're going to want to limit your throw to the right in your EPA. Now, some ready to run radio systems actually have an electronic EPA in them. So check your manual and you'll be able to go and adjust it in there. Now, if you have a bit better of a radio, let's say a computer radio with a screen on there, uh, go in through your system and find the EPA and adjust it accordingly. Now on this red cat, uh, these trucks typically have that endpoint adjustment issue in there. So you go into this uh, on, on this Fly Sky radio, adjust your EPA to stop that notchy feeling. Now, one other thing that it could be is your tires. Are your tires catching on your links or your body or your chassis or something like that? And the fix for that is one, did you swap out your tires? So did you put an aftermarket tire on there? Maybe it's too wide and it's catching and so maybe you really should reconsider finding a narrower tire maybe you bought the wrong offset rim 
uh, there's different offset and, and uh, offsets and rim. So if it cut, it's pushed farther in towards the truck, it's going to catch on something. Uh, or maybe the wheel hex, like let's say that 12 millimeter wheel hex behind the wheel, maybe that's too narrow. Uh, maybe you bought an aftermarket one, it's a little bit more narrow than the original one. So check that as well. And you know, if it's still catching, maybe you again want to go and limit your steering through one of the methods that I already told you. And that's really about it. That's a really common problem that I'm seeing out there and I just wanted to address it. Uh, I'm gonna throw this video under the Fix My RC Video series that I've been meaning to get back to to help people out because that's what we do here on the channel. If you need some help with an RC, you wanna learn, you wanna understand RC so you could be a better hobbyist, please click that subscribe button and the notifications bell. I'll have some links down in the description to help you out uh, finding RC products. And while you're there, if you have any comments or questions, put them in that section below, throw the video a like, and we'll see you back soon for some more RC driver videos.